A pleasant day each and every one. We are the college students taking mathematics in the modern world subject under the course Bachelor of Science in Accountancy in La Consolacion College, Manila. And we are here to discuss about Polya's problem-solving strategy. So without further ado, let's get started. For this session, we have a total of three given problems that we need to solve in order to get the right answers. Let's start with the first problem entitled, Enclose the Region. The given problem is, a rancher decides to enclose a rectangular region by using an existing fence along one side of the region and 2,240 feet of new fence on the other three sides. The rancher wants the length of the rectangular region to be five times as long as its width. The question is, what will be the dimensions of the rectangular region? Since we will be using Polya's problem-solving strategy, there are a total of four steps we need to follow in order to get the answer. The first step is to understand the problem. And right after understanding the problem, we need to devise a plan. Then, we will carry out the plan. And last but not the least, of course we need to review our solution. Now that we know these four steps, we will be able to conduct step-by-step -step procedures to come up with an answer. Let's start by understanding the problem. We are given the perimeter of the three sides rectangular fence and the relationship between the length and width of the rectangular region, which means we need to find the dimensions of the fence that will satisfy the described scenario. Now, let's devise a plan for the problem. The given perimeter in the problem is 2,240 feet. Take note that we have to substitute the equation of length in the perimeter equation to determine the width of the fence. Then, we have to substitute the value of width in the length equation to determine the length of the fence. It was mentioned that the new fence is to be enclosed along one side of the existing fence, but it was not clearly mentioned which side. Is it the length or the width of the existing fence? Hence, we will form two cases. For case number one, fence enclosed with the width of the existing fence. While for case number two, fence enclosed with the length of the existing fence. So if the new fence is enclosed along the width of the existing fence, which is the case number one, then the perimeter formula will be P is equal to 2 multiplied by L, plus W. Take note that P is the variable for perimeter. Well, for case number two, if the new fence is enclosed along the length of the existing fence, then the perimeter formula is P is equal to L plus two multiplied by W. Now we carry out the plan. For case number one, if the existing fence is enclosed along the width W, then P or perimeter is equal to 2 multiplied by the length plus the width. Then, we substitute the value of perimeter and length which are 2,240 feet and 5 times width or 5W. Then, we solve until we get the W which is 203.64. To compute for the length, we will substitute the value of W and divide it by 11. So, the value of L is 1018.18. Hence, the rectangular region is about 1018.18 feet long and 203.64 feet wide for case number 1. For the case number 2, on the other hand, if the existing fence is along the length L, then P or perimeter is equal to length plus 2 multiplied by the width. Then, substitute the values again. The same with how we did earlier on case number 1. We now came up with 320 of width and 1,600 for the value of length for case number 2. Lastly, we review our solution. We will just use our concluded formula earlier for case number 1 and 2, then substitute all the values that we got to the corresponding variables. Since the total perimeter of the two cases are equal to 2,240, it means that our answers for both cases are correct. Now, let's move on to our next given problem. The second problem is called the true-false test. 
The question is, in how many ways can you answer a 15-question test if you answer each question with either a true, a false, or an always false? Now let's find out. Just like what we did on the given problem earlier, we will first understand the problem. So we have a 15-question test, and for each question, there are three possible answers, which are true, false, or always false. Now we need to figure out the number of ways to answer this question using these options. Now that we understand the problem, we can now devise a plan. To solve this problem, we can use the multiplication principle. Since each question has three possible answers, the total number of ways to answer the entire test is calculated by multiplying the number of choices for each question together. Then 3 will be raised to 15, or can be written as what you can see on the screen. We will now carry out this plan. Let's calculate the number of ways to answer the test for different numbers of questions. Starting with 3 raised to 1 for one question, 3 raised to 2 for two questions, and up until the last one, which is the 15th question, 3 raised to 15. At the 15th question, as you can see, which is 3 raised to 15, that is equal to 14,348,907 ways. We will now review our solution to find out if our answer, 14,348,907 ways, is correct. Let's calculate 3 raised to 15 as what the screen is showing you. As we multiplied each number, we saw that the final answer is what we calculated earlier. So, there are 14,348,907 ways to answer a 15-question test if each question is answered with either true, false, or always false. For our last given problem, it's called the number of sky boxes. Under this problem, the sky boxes at the large sports arena are equally spaced around a circle. The 11th sky box is directly opposite the 35th sky box. So the question is, how many sky boxes are in the sports arena? Let's understand the problem first. It states that the sky boxes at the large sports arena are equally spaced around a circle. The 11th skybox is directly opposite the 35th skybox. We need to find out how many skyboxes are in the sports arena. Now we devise a plan. Let's use some algebra to represent the situation. If we let n be the total number of skyboxes and they are equally spaced around the circle, then the distance between the 11th and 35th skyboxes will be 35 minus 11 is equal to 24 skyboxes. Since they are directly opposite, the distance between them must be half the total number of skyboxes. We can set up the equation as 24 is equal to n over 2, or 24 is equal to n divided by 2. Then we carry out the plan. To solve for n, our equation will be n is equal to 24 multiplied by 2. The answer is 48. So, the value of n is 48. Now, don't forget to review our solution. We have found that there are 48 skyboxes in the sports arena. Therefore, the number of skyboxes in the sports arena are 48. That is all for today's discussion about Polya's problem-solving strategy. I hope you learned something from us, and I hope we see you on our next lessons. Thank you for watching. Bye!